My name is Patsy Stevenson. That's me in the picture. I was at a vigil for Sarah Everard, who a week earlier had been murdered by serving Metropolitan Police Officer Wayne Cousins. I was arrested by two of Cousins' colleagues. But what happened to me is nothing compared to what countless others have experienced at the hands of the Met. Let's start in 1993. While waiting at a bus stop with a friend, 18-year-old Stephen Lawrence is stabbed to death in a racist attack by a gang of white youths. The very next day, a list of the accused killers is posted anonymously in a phone box in the area. But despite positive identification in an ID parade by a witness to the killing, racism, corruption and incompetence, we'll see the killers walk free and Scotland Yard cover up its failings. Six years after the murder, a major public inquiry into the failed investigation finds that the Metropolitan Police is institutionally racist. Met Commissioner Paul Condon resists calls to resign but leaves the force the following year. 2005, Brazilian plumber Jean Charles de Menezes is shot in the head seven times by Metropolitan Police officers at Stockwell Underground Station after he's mistaken for a terrorist. Scotland Yard then instigates a sophisticated cover-up. The Metropolitan Police claims de Menezes was issued with a warning before being killed. Police also claim de Menezes jumped a ticket barrier and ran down the stairs towards the platform and that he was wearing a bulky coat in hot weather, thus justifying the actions of the officers who shot him. In reality, none of the claims are true. 2008, musician Sean Rigg dies in police custody in Brixton Police Station, one of many deaths in police custody for which families are still seeking justice. Sean dies of a cardiac arrest after police fail to identify his condition of paranoid schizophrenia and subject him to what an inquest jury will later call unsuitable and unnecessary force. Five officers are later exonerated of wrongdoing. Also 2008, the most senior ranking Asian officer in the force, Assistant Commissioner Tariq Gaffer, threatens to sue the Met for racial discrimination before winning a £300,000 settlement. Then, as the extent of the de Menezes failings and subsequent cover-up are exposed, Met Commissioner Sir Ian Blair resigns. His successor, Sir Paul Stevenson, promises root and branch reform and says he will return integrity to the force. We'd like to finish playing the film. Well, I, I'm going to politely, politely decline because we want to play the film through for, for a full 10 minutes. 2009, newspaper vendor Ian Tomlinson dies after a police officer in riot gear strikes him from behind with a baton and pushes him to the floor. Tomlinson had been making his way home when he was assaulted by an officer policing the G20 protest in London. Scotland Yard again instigates a cover-up, initially trying to persuade the Tomlinson family that there was nothing suspicious about the death and giving them an edited version of his first post-mortem examination. Scotland Yard tells the family that Tomlinson died of a heart attack and make no mention of a finding by a forensic pathologist that he had large amounts of blood in his stomach, a suspected dog bite on his leg and a number of other injuries. Phone camera footage from a tourist will later emerge showing Tomlinson being struck by a Metropolitan Police officer before collapsing. 2011, the News of the World newspaper is found to have hacked the phone of murdered schoolgirl Millie Dowler. What soon emerges is an industrial phone hacking operation with hundreds of victims. Scotland Yard oversees several bungled investigations before the spotlight turns on the Met's own involvement in the scandal. From police corruption, payoffs and the sharing of confidential information with the media, to personal relationships with senior editors and conflicts of interest at the top of the force. Met Commissioner Paul Stevenson apologises for institutional failings over phone hacking and resigns. His successor, Sir Bernard Hogan Howe, promises root and branch reform and says he will return integrity to the force. 2013, police use, in their own words, sexist and derogatory language while strip searching academic Dr Koshka Duff. Dr Duff had attempted to hand a Know Your Rights legal card to a 15-year-old being stopped and searched. After cutting off her clothes and searching her in a manner she said was like a sexual assault, the officers debated whether or not she was rank. That same year, it's revealed that undercover Metropolitan Police officers spied on the Stephen Lawrence family and their campaign for justice. One policeman says that senior Scotland Yard officers wanted him to find dirt on the Lawrence family and smear them. The disclosure is the latest revelation in the so-called spy cop scandal. Undercover officers have spied on more than 1,000 political groups over a 50-year period, stealing the identities of dead children and deceiving women into long-term sexual relationships, including fathering children. 
When an inquiry into the matter is announced by the government, the Met shreds huge volumes of relevant documents. 2014, the Met's stop and search policy targeting people on the basis of their skin colour and disproportionately impacting people of colour continues. Despite widespread criticism, despite 5,000 complaints over the following years, just six Met officers will be disciplined. 2014 to 2015, an inquest is told that institutional homophobia at Scotland Yard was responsible for the force's repeated missed opportunities to apprehend serial killer Stephen Port. Victims' families say their concerns and key evidence were ignored because of the prejudices of officers, meaning Port remained at large for over a year, killing four young men. Anthony Wargate, 23, Gabriel Kavari, 22, Daniel Whitworth, 21, and Jack Taylor, 25. 2015, Wayne Cousins, a serving police officer in Kent, is not investigated after an alleged incident of indecent exposure. Linked to possible offences going back for more than a decade, he is known by colleagues as the rapist. Cousins will soon join the Met. 2017, Sir Bernard Hogan Howe resigns as Met Commissioner just weeks before a critical report into Operation Midland. The Met's bungled handling of historic sexual abuse allegations. The new Commissioner, Cressida Dick, promises root and branch reform and says she will return integrity to the force. She was the officer in charge of the bungled operation that resulted in the death of Jean-Charles de Menezes. 2018, a Metropolitan Police officer picks on a black father because of his colour and attacks him in front of his children, breaking his knee in what a judge will later describe as a clear case of racial profiling. Grieving widower Carl Abrahams had done nothing wrong and with his two sons, aged 13 and 16, was walking back from a visit to their mother's grave. 2020, police officers share images of murdered sisters Nicole Smallman and Biver Henry, describing them as dead birds to WhatsApp groups of over 40 Metropolitan Police colleagues. The same year, other officers share racist and misogynistic messages with Wayne Cousins. 2021, Wayne Cousins is linked to two allegations of indecent exposure, having ordered McDonald's while naked from the waist down, but Scotland Yard fails to properly investigate. Five days later, while walking home from a friend's house in South London, Sarah Everard is stopped by Cousins using his police ID. She is handcuffed and abducted before being raped and killed by the serving officer. At a vigil for Sarah Everard, police use force to disperse the crowd, pinning women to the floor and making multiple arrests. Three months later, a major report into the unsolved murder of private investigator Daniel Morgan, found with an axe in his neck in 1987 finds that Scotland Yard was institutionally corrupt because it failed to properly investigate and then covered up repeated mistakes. The report scrutinised 110,000 documents, amounting to more than one million pages of evidence, many of which then Assistant Commissioner Cressida Dick sought to prevent being released. The report censures her for obstruction. 2022, messages show jokes between serving Met Police officers about raping colleagues, the deaths of black babies, the Holocaust and domestic violence. One colleague is known as McRapey Raperson, with one policeman telling a female officer, I would happily rape you. One officer is disciplined, but later receives a promotion. On February 10th, despite multiple scandals engulfing Scotland Yard, Met Commissioner Cressida Dick says that she has absolutely no intention of resigning. That evening, she resigns. In July 2022, her successor is announced. The new commissioner, Sir Mark Rowley, once again promises root and branch reform of the force. But the reality is that the Metropolitan Police Service is broken beyond repair. Reform has been tried for three decades and failed. No apologies or empty promises will bring back the lives lost or repair the harm done by Scotland Yard's corruption, racism, misogyny, homophobia and incompetence. It's time to break it up and start again.